Hello and welcome to the Palo Alto Network's Basic IPsec VPN Configuration Webinar. What we're talking about here today is a basic IPsec termination on a Palo Alto Network's device. Uh, with this, on the left-hand side, you'll see the VPN Peer A. This can either be a VM series software firewall or a hardware-based firewall. All of the configuration that we're going to be talking about will be exactly the same. On the right-hand side, this can be another Palo Alto, can be another um, some other vendor, or any standards-based IPsec termination. We're going to need to collect some information before we actually start the configuration. The first step we need is decide which ciphers we're going to use between this connection. You need an iCrypto set of ciphers, and you need an IPsec set of uh, ciphers. And they need to be at least agreed upon between the two locations. So we can't have one being one type of crypto and another type of crypto on the other side. It won't match. The second area that we need is collecting the IP information that we're going to need. One is the remote pair IP address. This is where the Ike session is going to terminate. And then the second set would be the local IP, again, where the Ike session is going to terminate. The last thing we need to do is select a shared key. This is a symmetrical encryption, and we need, to, uh, we need to pick out a shared key that will be used on both sides of the connection. For our example today, we're going to use AES-128CVC uh, encryption. We're going to use authentication of SHA-1. We're going to use a Diffie-Hellman group of two and a key lifetime of eight hours for the Ike cipher. On the IPsec cipher, we're going to use an Encryption of AES 128 CBC, an authentication of SHA 1, a Diffie Hellman group of two, and a key lifetime of one hour. The remote peer, the, the other end of the Ike connection, is going to be 10.0.0.29. And the remote peer subnet that actually lives behind it is 10.0.1.0/24. Our local IP address on our firewall has already been pre-configured that where the Ike is going to terminate, and that is 10.02.198. And the local subnet behind our local firewall is 10.0.3.0/24. And our pre-shared key is Palo Alto. Now that we've collected the basic information we're going to need, now the basic steps to actually create that IPsec tunnel on a Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall is number one, we need to check or create a usable Ike crypto profile. We'll need to create an Ike gateway. We need to create a security zone for the tunnel interface. This is not mandatory, but it's highly suggested that we use a separate zone for the, I, the IPsec termination to ensure that traffic requires a policy in order to flow. Number four is to create a tunnel interface. Number five is check and cr or create a usable IPsec crypto profile. And the last step is to create an IPsec tunnel. We'll now move over into the demo section of this presentation. We can show you step by step on how to create this IPsec VPN on an actual Palo Alto firewall GUI. Switching over into the user interface for the Palo Alto Next Gen firewall. You can see that this is a dashboard, and it gives you basic information about the firewall, some of the system logs, the data logs, and how we configure the rest of this IPsec is going to be exactly the same on any of the Palo Alto Next Gen firewalls. We'll switch over to the networking tab in the user interface, and we're looking at interface page here, and we're always showing that we have con some configuration on this firewall already. We've done the basic networking configuration to allow this to communicate on a basic Ethernet LAN. The first step in creating an IPsec VPN connection is ensuring that you have an Ike crypto profile that's suitable for your use. What we have here displayed is the predefined uh, crypto profiles. There's a default. Suite B, GCM 128, and 256. Now, if none of these match up to what you're looking to do, then there's always the capability of doing an add and creating your own crypto profile. So you get the selection of different groups for Diffie Hellman, different authentication schemes, and different encryption schemes. 
as well as your lifetime for the keys. Again, these must be symmetrical between the two locations. For our use case, we've decided to use AES 128 CBC, SHA 1 and Group 2 with 8 hours of lifetime. So the default is fine for what we're utilizing here. The next step in the process is to create an Ike Gateway. If we come under the Networking tab at the top and Ike Gateways here, we can see that there are no predefined Ike Gateways. These are very specific. So we click down here at the bottom to Add. From this point, we can give it a name for this Ike Gateway and let's just call it uh, Ike 1. And the version of Ike that we're dealing with, this is Ike v1 only, Ike v2, or preferred Ike v2. If in this case, uh, if we selected Ike v2 preferred, then it would try Ike v2 first and then switch back to Ike v1. We're going to stick with Ike v1. The interface we're dealing with here is our untrust interface, which happens to be Ethernet 1.1. And the local IP address, if we do a pull down, you'll notice the IP address that's assigned to that interface. In cases where it's DHCP assigned, that may show up as none. That's not a problem. Uh, it's just this works out better when, uh, when there is an IP address onto it. The peer IP address, this is the remote end of the connection, of this Ike connection. So it's the peer IP address that's facing, uh, facing this side of the connection. In our case, it's 10.0.0.29. The authentication we're using, this is our pre-shared key or password, and we pick Palo Alto. And again, we have to confirm that, Palo Alto. And for identification purposes, we're going to use IP addresses. That comes up in the request and uh, in the initiation. And we're going to put the local in here, which happens to be 10.0.2.198. And the remote, the peer connection, which is 10.0.0.29. In the advanced operations here, this is where we need to select in and pick the exchange mode that we're dealing with. Auto is fine. You have main or aggressive. In the Ike Crypto profile, we're going to select the profile that we're using. In our case, default was the one that worked best for us. And then we have a dead pair detection here. This is the interval of five and a retry of five. Usually works out pretty well. If you're dealing with NAT transversal, here's where you select NAT transversal. And passive mode is that it only is going to respond to requests for the tunnel connection, not initiate the tunnel connection. The next step that we need to accomplish is the security zone. This is the third step in the process. You'll notice that we already have two zones already created here. These were created previously in our initial configuration of the firewall. To get to this, we go to the networking tab and then under zones. Since we want to create a third zone so that the IPsec tunnel termination is terminates in a separate zone and that allowing policy to be zone driven for this, we can come down to the bottom and do an add. At this point, we can put in that it is uh, a, a zone name. IPsec is a good zone name. And then we have to pick a type. And this type is a layer 3 policy. And do IPsec. Now that's created. In order for a Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall data plane interface to respond to something like ping or to be a management interface, we have to create a management profile. We do this by going under the network and then interface management. There are no predefined, again, for this, but we can create doing an add and give it a name. In this, our case, we'll just call it ping and select the network service of ping. This allows that the Palo Alto Firewall on this interface will respond to a ping when it receives it for itself. The fifth step in the process is create a tunnel interface. In this case, we go into the network tab under interfaces and then select the sub tab of tunnel. With this, we can do an add and we're just going to, it is a tunnel and we give it a number, something we haven't utilized before. In this case, tunnel one. We can put a network profile onto this, a NetFlow profile, but mainly we're going to 
be configuring the same things that we configure on any interface on a Palo Alto firewall. So what virtual router does it define to? And that is default in our case. And then what security zone? And previously we created that IPsec security zone. The next step is to go to IPv4. In this case, this is where we're going to add that tunnel interface. In our case, we're going to be 10.0 10.10.10.2 slash 30. And under the advanced section here, we set the management, the management profile that we just created. So we can down here we can find ping that we have just created. And for the MTU for an IPsec tunnel, we recommend 1427 for the MTU size. Clicking OK creates that new tunnel interface. The next step in the process, step number six, is to create a usable IPsec crypto profile. So this is similar to the IPe crypto profile. Come under the networking tab and come down to the network profiles for IPsec crypto. And if you notice in here, we have three predefined already. Default, Suite B128, Suite B256. If you needed to create a special one for, for whatever your environment is, you can come down here and do an add, and it will come up and allow you to create a profile that uh, it will match whatever criteria you need. In our case, our what we've uh, been able to use or what we're planning on using is AES-128, SHA-1, and GROUP-1. So the default matches up to what we uh, can utilize here. So we're going to use the default. The last major step in the process is step number seven, this is creating an IPsec tunnel. So again, under the networking tab, IPsec tunnels, there are none created. We come down here to the bottom and do an add. We give it a name. We can call this IPsec number one. The tunnel interface that we created a few minutes ago, which was tunnel one. The type with auto key, so this is auto, auto keying, rekeying and address type IPv4, the Ike gateway that we created in the beginning. So this is Ike1 and the IPsec crypto profile that we created in step number seven and we're going to use default. Down here we can click on advanced options so if you wanted to do uh, um, enable replay protection or copy toss headers or any of those type of things that's where it's found under the advanced section. If we click OK, we don't have to worry about proxy IDs. Uh, this is a route-based tunnel. If you wanted to do a proxy-based or a, a policy-based tunnel, then you could have to put in the policy-based or proxy IDs in here. We're all configured. Everything is completed. At this point, we can come up here and do a commit for the firewall. And this should commit all of those things that we've, uh, we've set aside here. And as soon as the commit has finished, we should see a successful tunnel creation. You'll notice the red indicator on uh, that these this is indicating the tunnel is down. It's Ike, Ike is down, so we haven't finished phase one of the negotiation. You'll need Ike to be green before phase two or the IPsec to be green. And you'll notice now that the Ike tunnel has come up successfully. We do are successfully connected. You can see that uh, what we've used, it's uh, aggressive mode. The role is responder. Uh, so it didn't initiate it. And here's the algorithm that we've put into it for encryption, when it was created and when it expires. And the same thing for the tunnel information. So what the name of it is, the local and remote peer addresses, uh, all of the information, what were uh, bytes encapsulated, packets encapsulated that are going back and forth. Thank you for tuning in to our presentation on uh, terminating an IPsec VPN tunnel on a Palo Alto Networks firewall. If you should need any more information, uh, first stop should be to go to www.paloaltonetworks.com and from that point you should be able to find a whole lot more information about everything uh, in the Palo Alto Networks family. Thank you.